hello everyone and welcome back to another the tutorial video and today we are going to look at how to fly an RMP AR approach in the 737 so first of all I'm um, a disclaimer I'm not a real world pilot I'm just a flight sim enthusiast so everything might not be 100% accurate but at least you should be good enough to fly this realistically in the simulator so then should we just jump straight into it so, we are currently in Mount 11 for the RMP Whisky for runway 0 left in Oslo. Uh, so first of all we can uh, talk about what AR actually stands for. So AR basically means authorization required. And uh, the, what the difference is from an AR approach and a normal RMP approach is that there's an extra certification requirements in. And because the approach is just made up uh, a little bit differently from a normal RMP approach. Uh, Basically, it is, uh, as you may see on this approach here, we have a left turn uh, before we're turning final for the same one left in Oslo. And we are turning final at about approximately 3.4 north miles from the threshold. Um, so, compared to a double RP approach, we're going to be turning final a bit earlier than that. Um, this is why we have some extra certification requirements, it's because we're turning final so close to the runway. So, um, basically who actually needs this requir certification requirement is uh, the airline, the canoe and the aircraft of course. All aircraft that is capable of flying a normal RMP approach can fly an RMP AR approach. It is just that you need to be certified to do it. Um, uh, there isn't that many airlines around the world that actually have this certification from what I know. But at least one of those airlines is Norwegian that does have this certification. Um, when it comes to uh, actually flying this, it is going to be basically the same as a normal RMP approach, uh, but there is going to be a few different things uh, different. One of those is uh, what you should do if you lose, uh, for example, uh, uh, the GPS uh, when you're flying the approach, or in general something uh, happens with the navigation system aboard. Uh, then the operator of the aircraft did it draw up uh, some sort of uh, procedure to follow if something like that would happen in the approach itself. Uh, that's not public unfortunately, so uh, we don't really have that uh, flying in the simulator. Uh, so um, we will just uh, ignore that since we basically don't really have anything. But you can also make something up yourself um, when it comes to that. I'm not really sure how such a procedure would look like either, so I can't really... Um, give an example on it so uh, for, for for that purpose we'll just ignore it in this uh, tutorial video um, yes so like I said it is basically going to be the same as flying an RP approach uh, so uh, should we just uh, start flying then uh, so I've gone through how to conduct an RP approach already in the 77 so uh, link that will be in the description if you want to look a bit closer to that um, Today we are just going to be flying the uh, AR approach not go further into detail how to actually fly our nav approach in general. So, one thing to note about the RMP AR approach is when it comes to the minimums is the RMP uh, requirement. So as we see on this one we have an RMP requirement of 0.3 north miles. That's the standard for normal R nav approaches but there is some RMP approaches that have uh, other requirements for example 0.2 or even 0.1 north miles. So it is very important that you note that uh, and check. Uh, so if you need to change this, uh, because the aircraft will set it zero to zero point three automatically, you just go into the FMC progress and the large, uh, last page, RMP progress page, and then you can just enter it manually uh, up here uh, to what uh, you need to uh, use for the approach itself. So yes. Other than that, there isn't really anything specific to say. Uh, like I said earlier, it is just going to be a normal uh, RMP approach. So should we just uh, start uh, flying then? So we're currently in about 11, about 4.8 miles. So we open the speed window, maintain 220 knots, flaps 5, speed checked.
So since we are closing in here now, we will go set the uh, altitude 1032 feet, so it's at 1100 feet then in, on, in the MCP. Since now we're passing over Elbe, we need to do, uh, do a check to make sure that we are not deviating too much from um, the altitude. So, maximum allowed deviation or tolerance there is going to be 75 feet on, uh, on the altitude. And a cross factor of uh, 0.15. So we are now at Elbe, we are about 5000 feet, 5097.8 and nothing on the cross factor, so that is good. And we'll also double check that the RMP accuracy is set correctly. At the moment it isn't, so we'll just set 0 0.3 manually then. We can also open up the VSD. We got the most caution as well, and that is uh, air conditioning. Yeah, sorry for that, that is uh, uh, my fault, so we can just disable that. 2500. Speed Approach today, or the missile approach altitude is going to be 5,000 feet. So we can actually set that already. 5,000 set. And we'll do one other altitude check throughout the procedure as well to make sure that we are on path. So we can do that at Golf Mike 553, the final approach point at 1800 feet. You can see we have the runway inside, you can see how close we are already to the runway and we are not even turned final yet. Okay, gear down, flap 15, speed is checked. Camera crew, seats landing please. Land check to flaps, cap call, given, and start switches, continuous, speed brakes, arm, turning it down, flaps holding 15. So, a golf mic 553, 1800 feet. Just need to remember that. So the speed checked. Both 
1.553.18 feet. That's good. That means we are not deviating. Just deviating by 40 feet. And third plan for the green large speed thousand stable flat plan. One thousand. There we go. That was it for uh, for that. Hope that you have learned something new today. And like I said earlier, it is basically the same as flying a normal RNAV approach, just uh, a little bit more fun to do and a little bit more tricky sometimes as well. Like I said, other than that, hope that you have learned something new. And hope to see you again on a new tutorial video later on or in a future live stream. So have a good day. See you all soon. Bye bye.